Hey, Ukraine Media family, Sergei Praknevsky here. And in this video, I am super excited to show you how to create and rig this super powerful, dynamic, automated menu in After Effects. And by automated, I mean, the only thing that drives this animation is the location of this shape layer that I'm moving around. In other words, whatever this shape layer hovers over, like this button right here, that's the button that it triggers, right? So I'm gonna show you how, how to set this up in this tutorial. However, this is a part two tutorial, which means that the first part is crucial. So you should definitely watch the first part to this tutorial. And in the first part, I talk about how to set up one of these buttons. So I'll show you how to set it up, how to rig it using expressions and then master properties. But in this one, we're gonna talk about how to bring in that button and how to create this dynamic automated menu in After Effects. By the way, the link to the first tutorial is at the bottom of this video. So be sure to click on it and watch it first. And also, not only am I gonna show you how to set this up, but I'll show you how to create other features. Things like, let me show you, this fall off feature. In other words, right now, when I go to the next button, you can see the next button starts animating about here, but I can offset that. I can say, let's start, start a bit later. So maybe like 150, so half of that. So now when I go and get closer to it, you can see it doesn't start until here. So I'll show you how to set that up, how to create this fall off, and also how to create this button spacing option. In other words, I can space these buttons out and this thing still works. So I can go to this one, I can go to that one. So that's really powerful. Let me undo that. And let me undo that as well. So let's go back to 300. Another thing we'll talk about is how to create these advanced line height and spacing. So I can adjust the height of this line easily like this. I can also do the spacing. So that's pretty easy. Another thing that I, th I think is super powerful is the ability to add more buttons. So for example, I can get rid of these and as you can see, they're gone, but I can easily create more buttons by selecting the last one, this one, and then pressing control D. And as I duplicate it, it automatically places it right next to it, right? And I can have as many buttons as I want. And this thing still works dynamically. And not only that, because these buttons were rigged using master properties, I can go to, let's say this button and I can go to master properties and let me select this, press S twice to solo it and then right click and I can edit the value of it. I can say, change the name to Eucra Media. And then when I say, okay, you can see that this button has been changed and it's just, it's the same composition as everything else. However, because we're using master properties, it gave us that option. So I think you'll learn a lot from this tutorial and without any further ado, let's dive right into it. All right, so let's create this fully automated menu. And obviously we have already created a button for this. So now we're going to create this full menu using the button we already created. And to do that, we're gonna start fresh. We're gonna create a new composition by clicking on this icon here, new composition icon. And I'm gonna rename this to menu. And then I'm gonna keep it at 1920 for width and height 1080. And uh, frame rate will be 2997, duration is 900, press okay. And then I'm going to move this composition that we just created into this tutorial folder. So it kind of stays neatly in there. And then we're going to drag some things into this composition. So let's drag Let's do this background so we have something to play with. So we do have the background. And next, what I want to do, I want to create this blue menu uh, shape, whatever you want to call it. So let's do that. I'm going to, again, you can double click on this. You can just draw a menu that you want like that. Notice when I draw a shape, you can see by default, it puts the anchor point in the center of your composition. However, I do have a feature checked where when I let go, it centers my anchor point wherever my shape is. So it's in the center of my shape, which is really cool. But that feature is not checked by default. So you would have to go to edit and then preferences. You can just use the shortcut, go to general. And then in here, you'll see this checkbox right here, center anchor point in new shape, shape layer. Basically, you want to make sure that's checked. And when you do that, it's going to automatically center your anchor point to a new shape, which is super awesome. Now, if you don't want to do that, you can do it old school. You know, you can just select the shape and do control alt home and then it'll center it that way which is good so i'm going to rename this to menu background i think that's what i'm going to go with and then 
let's go to size. By the way, you can get the size number of different ways. So you can use control and click on this triangle to kind of collapse everything. And then you can select the size and hit S twice to solo it. That's one way. Or you can select your shape layer and then go over here and type size. And then you'll see it there. So whichever way you arrive there, but that's what we're going to do. And next, what I want to do, I want to rig this real quick. So I'm going to press Alt click on the stopwatch to create an expression for this property. And in here, we're going to assign like a basic expression. So we're going to assign something to the X and to the Y value of this size property. So this one is a two dimensional property, which means that we have to speak the same language. So I'm going to say open square bracket, close square bracket. And in here, we're going to define what we want for the X and the Y. So for the X, right, for left and right, we want it to be the same size as our composition. So we're going to say width. And then for the Y, I'm going to keep it at 100 pixels. So that's good. As you can see, it's not really centered. And if you want to center this, uh, what you need to do, just go to the Align tab here. If you don't see that or Align panel, just go to Window, and then you'll see Align. Check that. And then you can click on this bottom, right? This will snap to the bottom, and then center it. So that's good. It's that easy. And we have created successfully this blue background menu thing. I'm going to place it in here. So I'm going to keep it as this. So next, what we're going to do, we're going to bring in our button. So there's our button. We can drag it into it like this. And as you can see, we rigged it in the way to where we have master properties in here. This animation property, it goes from 0 to 100. So we have animation. And then we also have text. So we can change the text by right-clicking and going to edit value. We can type any kind of text in here. So I'm going to say title 1. OK. So let's rig this. And before we do that, let's create a new null. I, I like working with nulls. They're perfect for rigging. So I'm going to bring it in into our composition. Control, Alt, Shift, Y. I can't remember the order. Is it Alt, Control, Shift, or Control, Shift, Alt, whatever it is. But it's Control, Alt, Shift, Y. And then in here, you can see we have a new null in our composition. We're going to rename this to Controls. And then what I want to do, I want to drop this menu, or not this one, this button menu into here, right? Not only do I want for this null to control this button, but I also want the center of it being in the same place where my anchor point for this null is. So you can kind of drag it and eyeball it, but that's that's not precise and it'll take you some time. The quickest way to do it, if you press shift on your keyboard and if you pick whip, in other words, if you parent it to the null, you know, like that null right there, so and then it will automatically snap your button to the anchor point of your null, which is really, really cool. All right, so now we have this null controlling our button. I'm going to place it in here. Let's zoom in. So let's work on this button. Let's rig it. And before we do that, let me keep it at 100. And before we do that, let's create this line shape. I call it line shape, but I don't know what you want to call it. So this element right here. So let's go to the menu and let's double click on this shape layer. Or you can do that the easiest way to actually just to draw a shape, right? This is the shape that we want. And then we want to rename this to line. Let's change the color of it to this white right here. So I'm going to click here and let's pick or I, I drop that in there. And then we have it in here. Obviously, it's white, so it's kind of hard to see. Let's move it down to the blue space. So now we have it in here. Let's zoom that in. Now, the problem is our shape is not the same size as our button. You can do it manually. You can kind of tell, you know, go to size again, make sure you select it and type size. And there's our size. So how can we make this shape the same size as our button by default? So if I change the size of this button, I want for it to always adjust to the same size as our button. And before we do that, let's drop it right above our button and let's parent it to the null. So the, the control null or the controls null kind of moves everything when I move it. That's good. OK, so let's do that. All right, so the first thing you want to do, obviously, Alt click on the stopwatch to create an expression for the size property. And in here, we're going to use some expressions to rig it. So let's move that down. And let's create a new variable. I'm going to say button. And I'm just going to pick whip to this button. That's it. And in the square brackets, remember, it's a two-dimensional property, which means that we have to define something for the x and the y. We can't just leave it with one uh, value. It needs to have two. And square brackets will give you that. So for the x, we want it to be right the same width as our button. So we're just going to say 
button. And again, that's a made up variable that I assigned this path to. And then in here, I'm going to say I want the width property of that button. Okay, so that should do it. And then for the Y, I'm going to, let's keep it at, let's see, what do we want? Let's keep it at 10 for right now. Okay, so now we have this shape that has the same width as our button, which is great. And then the height of it is 10 pixels. But let's not, I don't like being able to change things in my expressions. I want to have the ability to do it outside of my expressions. I don't, I don't always want to go into expressions to change a single digit. So we're going to create a new variable. We're going to call it line height. And then we're going to create a new, I'm going to select this, create a new slider. And let's go to expression controls, slider. And we're going to rename this to line height. So this variable, we're going to pick whip to that line, line height. So now this variable means this value. So I'm going to close it with semicolon. And then instead of 10 here, I'm going to say B, this variable, right? Which means this value, right? This variable has the address to that value. So now when I let go, you can see it went to nothing because this slider is set at zero, but we can move on it and create whatever we want. So I'm going to set it at 10 pixels. Okay. So that's a quick way to rig something like that. So it's pretty easy. So the next thing we want to do, we want to take this line shape and then rig the position of it to where it sits right on top of our button. And I'll show you how to do that. So I'm going to select this line. Let me kind of offset it so you can see what we're doing. And I'm going to press P for position. And I'm also going to select this button, press P for that position as well. And what we're going to do, we're going to right click on this position property and we're going to separate dimensions. When you do that, it kind of separates it. It gives you the X and the Y, which is great. And also let's do the same thing for this button position. So separate dimensions. Now we have X position and Y position soloed out. So what I want to do now, I'm going to play with the Y right here of this line. So let's all click on the stopwatch here and let's create some variables. Let's drag this down. So the first variable I'm going to create, I'm going to call it button. And then in here, we're going to pick whip to the X position. And actually, don't worry about the X position just yet because we just want, yeah, we just want the height right of this button. So I'm just going to say button. And it's a one dimensional value. So we just, we can just do one single digit here. So I'm just going to say button and then I can say, Let's do height. So now you can see that it put our button way in here, which is not what I want. So I'm going to say, give me negative value of that. So negative, go in the opposite direction. Now I put it up top, right? Which is still not what I want, but I, we were in the center here and it moved us the same size as this button, right? It moved it over here. That's kind of what I want, but I only want to go halfway of this button. So instead of saying the full length or height of my button, I'm going to say, give me the height and then take that height value and divide it by two. Okay. And then it puts it exactly where I want it. But even with that, I don't want to put negative in here. I'm going to say divided by negative two, and that will do the same thing essentially. So we have kind of fixed it, but the problem is the, the button ends right here, but now we have this line that it puts it in the center. So I want to offset this line too and put it to where it, the edge touches the edge of my button. And to do that, we're just going to say, and then we're going to say this layer and let's do source rect at time. And then we'll do height. So source rect at time is just a method that gives you the height of shape layers or text layers. So when I click away, you can see it did the same thing, right? It, it went downwards, right? We need to change the, instead of plus, we should probably say minus, right? Minus, and it'll do the same thing. But not only that, I don't want to go the full height of my shape, right? I only want the half of it. So then I'm going to say divide by two, right? And then it'll do the exact same thing. Now, I don't like doing it this way. So I'm going to say plus here, and then I'll say divide by two here. It makes more sense. It's the same thing. It's just, for me, it makes more sense that way. So now 
it doesn't matter the size of this button, this line will always be on top. Now, maybe you do want some space in here, so you probably do want to create some kind of option to create like a spacing slider or something like that. Because right now, you can't move it up and down. You can move it side to side, but it's restricting you, right? So you do want to create some kind of spacing in here, at least an option to do it later. So I'm going to create a new variable for this line. Go over here. Well, not a new variable, but a new slider. I'm, I'm going to select this and do Control D to duplicate it. And let's change it to spacing. Okay. And I'm going to set it to zero right now. So what I'm going to do now, so I can either add it to the end here, but I kind of like it. I like to add things the way they are visually. So we have a line, right? Or a button and then a line, but I'm going to do a button and then space and then our line, right? So I want to add it in here visually so I can visually see how it's playing out. So I'm going to say plus, and well, before I do that, I do need to create a variable, right? Because we don't have the spacing variable in our expression yet. So I'm going to create a variable called spacing, and then I'm going to attach it to this value right here. Okay. So this spacing text English that's just made up doesn't mean anything. We have attached some kind of value to it and it is pointing to this value. So when I refer to spacing in my expression here, I'm really referring to the value in here, right? So I'm going to copy this and then I'm going to say plus spacing plus that's um, this, the height of this line, right? So now when I let go, you can see not much changed because spacing is zero, but I can adjust, right? the spacing. And by the way, I want to reverse that. So instead of plus, we're going to say minus. So when I go in negatives, it's going down. When I go in positives, it's going up. Okay, so in here you can create some kind of spacing right between your button if you or line if you want to. So that is a good feature if you need it. I'd rather have it than not. So, And really with that, I think that's how we rig this line. And I think we're good to go with that. So I can move it around. You can see it's giving us something interesting. Now let's move or let's rig this button to where when I move this shape, it does something to the animation of this button. And now we're going to go into this button and we're going to go into, let's master properties, right? So we're going to deal with these two. I'm going to select them, press S twice to solo it. So let's alt click on this stopwatch for this animation and let's figure this out. Let's see how we can rig this to where it deals with this line right here, line shape. So the first thing I want to do, I want to determine the the first point. And before I do that, let me select this line, press P to reveal the position, right, of our line. And also select this, press Shift P, right, so we can add to the selection that we already have. So now we have our position visible to us in our timeline in here. And so I'm going to go back to animation here, and then let's create some variables. So I'm going to create, again, made up variables don't really mean anything unless we assign something to them. So Let's come up with point one. Again, totally made up. So point one is going to be, let's do the X position of this shape, line shape. So in other words, I want to know where it is on the X, right, instead of Y. So I want the X position. So right now it's there. Okay. And then my point two, let's close it. Let's do point two is going to be our current layer, right? The position, X position of our current layer. Okay, that's all I want. So we have two positions. And then I want to find out the distance between this position, X position, not the Y, and this X position. So right now they will have a little, right? If they were right on top of each other, it would be zero, right? Because they're right on top of each other. But right now they're a little off. Whoops, make sure you select the right one. Then it will give us a little gap in here because they're not on the exact X position, right? So we're going to use a method called length, okay? And we're going to do that in a variable. I'm going to create a new variable called distance. Again, totally made up. And then we're going to assign this new or this method called length. And what this method does, it gives you the length of two points. And in this case, we're going to use two points in here, right? The the line and the button. So I'm going to say, give me the point or the length between point one comma point two. So it's going to give me the length of those two points. So now when I let go, you can see it gives me 39 because right now if I set the X right here to zero, you can see that my X position 
of the button is set at zero. And then the line is right here is set at zero as well. And because of that, it gives us zero in here. But if I take this X position and offset it to like maybe 16, you can see the distance between two of them is 16 pixels. So it's working, it's giving us exactly what you want. And you can see it's it's doing something to our animation because this value right does something between zero and 100. So when, when it is zero, the animation is zero, but when it's 100, the animation is 100 as well. But we want to have more control with that. I don't want to be just married to the position. I want to have more control. So that's where we're going to use a method called linear. So we're going to take this value that we get from this variable, and we're going to plug it into linear method. I'm going to say linear. And in here, I'm going to say take this distance variable, right? take this value that we get from the distance. And for right now, we're only going to be interested in a value that's zero, between zero and let's keep it at 100 for right now. Uh, let's do 200. Okay, 200. So when it's zero, I want our animation value to be 100. In other words, I want it to be like when it's zero, meaning when both X of the button and the line is zero, right? When they're on the top of each other, I want the animation of the button to be finished. So I want it to be, when it's zero, I want it to be 100, because at 100, our animation is finished. And then when it is one or three, 200, whenever it's 200 away from the button, right, I want for the animation to be zero. So I hope that makes sense. So watch this. Let me visually show you what I'm talking about. So when this line on the X position is zero, right, they do match. Both of them are zero. So that's why we get 100 in here, right? The animation is at 100%. But when we move it away to, let's say, 200, you see it gives us the animation zero because at 200, it's zero. So in a way, this value is the fall off of this animation. So for that, I'm going to create a variable because I don't want to be changing it in here. So let's create a new slider, right? We're going to create a new slider and I'm going to create it for the controls. So it's going to be the global slider. So in here, I'm going to create a new slider. And I'm going to change this to just say fall off. OK. And I'm going to create a new variable in here as well. So fall off. OK. And then I'm going to attach it to our slider in here. And now I want to be able to control this number from the slider. So I'm going to take this variable that has the path to our slider and then replace this 200 for that variable. OK, so now obviously not much is happening because the value over here is zero, right? So if I move on this line, you can see it's not working. But if we set this value to, let's say, 300, and now when I move this, right, at 300 is going to be zero, and then at zero is going to be 100. So that's figured out. OK. So next, what I want to do, obviously, we already have the fall off. What we want to do is work on the buttons itself. Like, how do we duplicate this? Obviously, we can just do this. You can select this, Control-D, and duplicate it, and place it wherever you want. And essentially, you are there. Now this thing will work. But I want to rig that process as well, because spending a little time there will help you in the long run. So let's do that. So what I'm going to do. Again, I'm going to delete this button for a second, so I'm going to start fresh. We have this button we just created. What I want to do, make sure you select it, press Control D and duplicate it. So now we have two of them. We have one button, right, the one button here, and then one button there. Okay, so what I want to do, I want this button to always be right next to that button, but I want to do that with the expression. And let's do that. I'm going to select this new button, press P to reveal the position, and Let's do the same there. Maybe I think we might need those. Maybe not. We'll find out. So for the Y, I want it to always to be zero because right now I can move up and down. So I'm going to alt click on the stopwatch and I'll just set this value to zero. So if I try to move it up and down, you can see it's not, not allowing me to do that. And the same thing for that one as well. Alt click and then I'll set it to zero. And now we have both of them. They're not going anywhere on the Y axis. OK, for the X axis, in fact, let me get rid of this prop, this Y property and click on it and we'll get rid of both of them so that we only have two. I'm going to alt click on the stopwatch for the X position here and let's rig it up. So the first thing I'm going to create, I'm going to create a variable that's called button below. 
and I'm going to point to the position, right, this X position of the button below, okay? And now, if I say button below, you can see it will snap to the position of the button below, which is exactly what I want. But I don't always want to be specific on which button, because right now, even though this button is below us, but it's not, it's not pointing to the button below, it's pointing to the button called button 2, which is that one. So I don't want to be that specific. I always want it to be referring to the button that's below this button. And to do that, we can use the keyword index. So if I type index instead of the actual name of the button, which kind of restricts us to that button, when I say index, it points to the current index of my button. So it doesn't matter. I mean, if right now it's three, but it can be, when I move it up, it can be two. So it doesn't really matter, right? It always gives you the correct current index of your button. So right now it gave us, it's referring to itself and that's why I went back to where it used to be. But I want the button below, always the button below, regardless what the name of it is, right? So what I'm going to say, I'm going to say take the current index, which is three, and point to this index. So the button below index is actually higher. So it's always higher below and lower above, right? So if I want to refer to something below, I would just say current index and then plus one. And then it'll give, you know, three plus one is four, and then it's pointing to that. So I hope that makes sense. So if you want to point to something below, you just say index plus one. And if you want to point to something above, you would just say index minus one, then it would take the current index, subtract one, and that's how you get that. So I hope that makes sense. Okay, so now we're grabbing the position of the button below, which is exactly what I want. But we are not done yet. So next, what I want to do, I want to add on to that. So I'm going to say plus, and then I'll point to itself, right? This layer, you can type it out or just point to itself like that. And then we're going to say this layer width. So watch what happens. When I let go, it places it right, right, right next to it, which is kind of exactly what I want, but not really because of this. So right now we put our next button right next to this one, but it places them right next to each other like that. And this, I mean, I don't want both of them to be like this. I want them to be on top of each other to where it's just one stroke instead of a double. And to do that, I'm going to offset it. You can do it manually here. You can just say, what is it? Subtract, I think the stroke, the size of it was four pixels. So I can say four, right? And it'll fix it. And that can be it. But Again, we want to have like the ability to do it in a slider. So I'm just going to create a new slider, the global slider here, and I'm going to cre create, you know, again, right click, expression controls, slider, and I'm going to rename this to, let's do, what should I name this? Button, let's do spacing maybe, something like that. Okay, and then we're going to create a new variable, I'm going to say button spacing. I'm going to pick whip to this value right here. Okay, so now we have this made up variable pointing to the, you know, having this path, which is pointing to that value. And then I can just plug it in in here. And, and really, again, you don't have to do it the way I do it, but I like to see it visually played out the same order, right? I want the button below first, right? And then spacing, right? So it's a button, then spacing, and then the next button, right? So I like to put it between those two. So I'm going to say uh, button spacing and then plus, right? So when I do that, not much is happening because our value is zero. But then I can say negative four, right? Negative meaning go to the left. So negative just means the direction we're going. And now we can offset that and it's pretty easy. So I can do it quickly like that without doing any you know, without going into the, the actual expression and adjusting the number here, I can do it with the slider, which is really cool. Well, that is pretty much it as far as, as far as set up. So really we have things rigged up here. And at this point, what you want to do, I mean, it's, it's really like a miracle, like a magic. Check this out. So you would just select your button, the second one, and then just control D and duplicate it for as many times as you want. So I'm going to do control D and duplicate it like that. And each time you duplicate it, it places it right next to where, wherever you need it. And now I can select the snow and maybe I want it to size down some. I'm going to press S to reveal the scale property. And I'm going to tell it to go down in size to 60 pixels. So now we have, right, this awesome looking menu. And we have four of them. But let's 
let's make it more. So watch how easy it is to create buttons. I mean, you can just control D and duplicate again and again and again. So we have what, like seven of them and it's pretty easy. So then you would probably want to line them up to where, wherever you need it to be, like maybe on the, like on the Y, like around here, maybe you want to find the center. Is it, what is it? Alt, is it quotes or something like that to get the, um, the uh, proportional grid. Then you would select the middle one and kind of line, it, line them up. Make sure you have your, yeah, null selected. And you kind of want to line it up to the center of that one. Make sure you drag that one. Okay. Yeah, you kind of want to line it up like that. So now I know it's exactly at the center. Okay. And yeah, let's see. So on the Y axis, I mean, you can adjust this however you want to, you want it to be that close, but we are pretty much done. This is how you create this fully automated menu and you can move on this. And you, as you can see, whatever button we hover over, that's what we see visible in here. And the cool thing about this, because we have rigged it using master properties, we can easily change the button name. For example, I can take this button, whichever one it is, that one, okay. And then I can go to master properties, select this name, hit S twice to solo it, right click and edit value. And then I can say, I want you to be Euchre Media. And then boom, it's Euchre Media. And the cool thing about that is that it's just one composition, one, you know, it's one composition and you don't have to like duplicate it and replace it. So master properties are really, really cool, especially when you use them with expressions. So now to kind of wrap this up, look at what we created using some basic expressions and master properties. And with that, my name is Sergey Praknevsky and this is ukramedia.com. <laughs>